everybody it's me crafty and uh, this video is going to talk about some of the uh, more common herbs that I use on a more frequent basis um, I got a request from one of my subscribers that want to know what herbs I use more often and just wanted to know kind of what I use them for and whatnot this is by no means a limited um, list like I use a lot of different types of materials and and stuff and I'll just go over some of the the ones I use more often okay and what we use them for so sage and sweetgrass I had done a video on sage and talked a bit about sweetgrass in other videos and whatnot um, we use those almost all the time not all the time. Uh, we use them for uh, protection, um, ancestral works, healing, divination type works, anything and everything we pretty much use sweetgrass and sage for. Okay, another thing is asphatadia. I've done a video on asphatadia in the past. If you haven't watched it, you might want to check it out. Um, and we use that for protection. Some people use it in their cooking. It stinks really, really bad. If you do use it in a cooking, your cooking, say if you're making a big pot of chili, all you need to add is a tiny little pinch of it to the whole entire pot. It kills bacteria. It's highly protective, um, but it smells really bad. So um, we use it uh, to bury, because uh, you can get in powdered form or kind of like this rock form. And we will bury like the rock form in the four directions of our property. We will also use the powdered form and sprinkle it around our home clockwise to like protect our home, kind of like layering on the protection. Uh, we also added uh, a tiny, tiny amount of it to uh, things like protectors, uh, protection incense and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that we use quite a bit. Licorice root powder. Um, the kind of licorice you buy in the store, the candy, is usually flavored not with licorice but with anise, um, which smells like licorice, tastes like licorice, but it's not licorice. And um, we use the actual licorice root powder for a heart medicine that we make. It's one of our major ingredients. And it's for like people that have had heart attacks or heart problems, that type of thing, heart defects. And so it's really important that um, we use the actual licorice, not the anise, because it, they don't have the same qualities. When doing any kind of work with herbs and whatnot, the onus is really on the individual to study it, learn as much as you can, research every single plant that you're working with thoroughly. Uh, you don't want to be poisoning yourself or anybody else. Some parts of certain plants are toxic while others aren't. Uh, if you work with any type of toxic plants, you need to know what you're dealing with. If you're pregnant, diabetic, have any other type of uh, health problem, again, you also need to be careful. There's certain herbs that um, could really harm a baby if a woman's pregnant, so you need to be careful and you really need to know what you're doing. And if you don't know, again, the onus lies upon you to research and to find out for yourselves, okay? So you just got to take that in mind. A Grimney, I always um, have this on hand. Uh, great for uh, protective type incenses and, and things like that. So um, I always use that. I always have copal. I'm kind of running a little low. <laughs> um, I love the smell of copal. And a little bit goes a long way. So um, what some people do is those... Uh, charcoal discs that you can use uh, to burn incense. Take a little piece of copal like that and uh, put it on the disc and you know a little of it goes a long way. Long close this container. Oh my hair got caught in there. One is hard to close. Dragon's blood resin. Um, I love that stuff. It's powerful. It's very protective. It adds more energy 
to anything you're working with. So if you're making a healing type incense, it's great for that. If you're making a protective type incense, it's great for that. If you're doing kind of like a banishing type thing, it's great for that. Um, it, it's one of those general all-purpose kick-ass type of things to use. White, um, no, this is hazel tree bark. I was thinking white oak bark, which I think I have up there. Um, remember the video I done about wands and whatnot? Well, my mom had um, given me my first wand, which is my hazel wand. And what I had done was strip the bark off and dried the bark and uh, saved it. So I use this for um, anything to do with wisdom, healing, protection, that type of thing. So I'll add it to incense. You can make tea out of it. Um, so yeah. What else do we have here? St. John's work. A lot of people, when you say St. John's work, they think depression. They think it's like an antidepressant, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it's good if somebody is suffering from mild depression or whatnot, um, you know, St. John tinctures or teas, you know, that's great for that. However, it also has a lot of other uses. Um, it's great for muscle pain. Uh, you can make it into salves, you can, um, you know, and rub on like, sore, achy muscles and whatnot. Uh, it's great for that as well. It's also good for, you know, health, protection, strength, that kind of thing. And you can, you know, make a tea out of it. You can add it to incense. So there's a variety of different uses that you can get out of uh, St. John. sandalwood um, I use this quite a bit uh, again usually just for incenses or I'll add a little bit maybe to protectors and whatnot mistletoe you need to be careful when working with mistletoe um, you know especially if you're pregnant so uh, yeah use it primarily for protection like protection or you know things like that we'll add it to like protectors and different types of amulets and talismans and whatnot um, frankincense it kind of looks like copal it's another resin and um, I like the smell of it and uh, myrrh um, frankincense myrrh sandalwood a little bit of dragon's blood and some copal um, is a great uh, protective type of uh, incense. So anyway, um, yeah, there's that. And look at the time here. <clears throat> Have you ever seen on pine trees? Um, there's kind of like these white things that kind of grow out of the pine tree. They kind of look like a, a mushroom growing on the side of the pine tree. Uh, they're kind of white and oval shaped and they're like stuck on the pine tree. Uh, we use that as well. Uh, this stuff comes from up north, way up north. And um, my cousin actually got this and gave it to me from his wife. Um, or his ex-wife <laughs> and we'll break off a little piece like that I don't know if you can see that and uh, we'll add it to uh, protective like incense we'll add it to uh, protectors and, and things like that a little bit goes a long way so um, that's another thing that we collect it's probably some type of uh, fungus or whatever but um, we use it for protection primarily so yeah there's that stuff Another quick little thing I'll talk about, and it's not a, a herb per se, uh, is Tiger Balm. You can get this in Chinatown, you can get this at various drugstores. There's the red kind, which is this kind, which is the stronger kind, and then there's the white. I personally like using the white, my mom likes using the red. Great for protection. It's um, My grandparents discovered this. How? I don't know. And um, yeah, so uh, say if negativity was de deliberately sent your way to harm you and say whoever it was that sent it was targeting a certain area of your body you would 
circle this around that certain area so it doesn't travel elsewhere. Um, and then on the healthy part of your body, kind of like with sympathetic magic, you would apply this stuff to that area and like transfer um, the the healthy, the good health part to the part that's affected. Um, normally it's just used for arthritis and that type of thing, but uh, my grandparents have used it for um, protection for quite a while, so yeah. And I'm over 10 minutes and I don't know if this video is going to upload or not. So I'm going to say goodbye for now and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Ciao.